Welcome. Grace and peace be with you. I'm Paul Stevens. I'm the ordained minister in placement at St Luke's Uniting Church in Highton, which is in Geelong. Thank you for those of you who have contacted us with feedback since we began these services, which was way back at the end of March, believe it or not. We value the input we receive. Next week, we will be focusing on the gift of creation and in particular the significance of biodiversity for the health of the world. We would love you to help us with the service by sending in pictures or short videos of the wonders of creation, perhaps something you've come across during your daily lockdown, uh, COVID lockdown walk. Another idea might be to actually make a model of a critter or a plant and take a picture of it and send it in. We would value your contribution please uh, use the uh, email address that's on the congregation's website as a way of sending in the, your responses, or perhaps you'll see it on the video uh, at this particular point. If you could, please send them in by midweek uh, in this forthcoming week of June. Last week, we focused on the energising and enlivening power of the Holy Spirit as we celebrated Pentecost. This week we are marking Trinity Sunday. Today is all about praising God for who God is, for celebrating God's revelation of God's self to us in the persons of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Let's share together now in our opening prayer. Let's come before God in prayer. O Lord, our Creator and Father, giving us mercies without number. You are holy, O Saviour Jesus Christ, loving us and setting us free. You are holy, O Spirit of truth and peace, leading us in the ways that are right. O holy, eternal Trinity, we give you thanks that you welcome us into your life of perfect love and empower us to share your life through our living may we offer you praise from the depth of our beings. God of new beginnings, enable us to be always open to be transformed more and more into the way of Christ. Where needed, heal us. Where needed, forgive us. And where needed, renew us. For we confess that we have not loved you or our neighbour or even ourselves in the way that you have called us to do. In your very being is found perfect reciprocal relationships, but we know our relationships are so often marred by discord. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to correct what we are and to direct what we shall be. And through Jesus Christ our Lord, assure us within the depth of our beings that you value us and will forgive us. We pray in his name. Amen. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Creation of human beings. Then God said, Let us make human mankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and all over the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. Reading from the second letter of Paul to the church at the Greek port of Corinth, chapter 13, verses 11 to 13. 
These are the last words of Paul in this letter. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. When I was growing up and when I was a young minister, Trinity Sunday seemed to be all about trying to explain how one thing could be three things and three things one thing. Do you remember the kind of illustrations that we used in church to try to do this? A preacher would hold up a three-leaf clover, for example, and point out that there are three segments in a clover leaf, but only one leaf of clover. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist Church, apparently spoke about three candles in a room, but one light. I once brought into a church service for a kid's time liquid water, ice and steam to show how H2O, the one molecule, could be found in three forms. But really all these illustrations miss the point. We cannot figure God out. God is not some kind of complex mathematical problem which we have to solve. God is the one who reveals God's self to us. The Eastern Church's approach to God as Trinity is helpful, I think. Eastern churches begin with the experience of God as three persons. They begin with the three. They have what is called a social approach to the life of the Trinity. This reflects the way the teaching about the Trinity emerged in the life of the early church. It was not a doctrine cooked up by a theoretical ivory tower theologian, but came about because of the worship and prayer life of the first Christians. Yes, they upheld the oneness of God, yet they prayed to the Creator God, the one Jesus called Abba, his Father. They also found themselves praising the crucified, risen and ascended one, Jesus Christ and Lord, the one Matthew in his Gospel calls God with us. And then there was the Holy Spirit, the very power and presence of God with the early church, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ who empowered them, who sent them out to live the good news. Greek theologian John of Damascus, who lived in the seventh century, pictured the Father, Son and Holy Spirit being like three dancers holding hands, dancing around together in harmonious, joyful freedom. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, three persons, bound together in perfect love and complete harmony of will as the one God. Truly holy three, holy one. Now let me change track a little and briefly highlight two implications of the triune life of God for the way we live. The first has to do with hospitality. Have you ever thought how in the Gospel accounts of Jesus he's always attending meals and about how he would not be dictated to about with whom he would share table fellowship? Jesus ate with everyone from tax collectors to Pharisees to rulers to folk with all sorts of what were considered dubious pasts. Jesus was into sharing meals. And the 15th century Russian icon writer Andrei Rublev reflects this in Trinitarian terms in his famous icon. The icon shows the three persons of the Trinity seated around a communion table with an empty space at the table in the foreground, a, table, a place at the table where the observer, you and I, have a spot, have a place. The icon speaks of the triune God offering overflowing hospitality, inviting all to join in the Trinity's banquet of love. I've gone into this in the past at St Luke's in some detail, but it's a powerful and hope-filled image which is worth returning to time and time again. The second implication of the triune life of God has to do with valuing difference. Thinking of the triune nature of God negates the image of God as an individual entity up there somewhere. God is an old bloke in the clouds, 
watching us from a distance, as goes the Bette Midler song, the kind of image of God you often see in cartoons. To understand the nature of God as involving three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, is to affirm a wonderful rich blessing of diversity in the very life of God. Recent days have seen terrible events unfolding in the US because of all sorts of historical and current racial tensions. And one of the underlying causes has to do with the fear of those who are different, the fear of the other. As you heard in that reading from Genesis chapter 1 a little earlier, we humans are created in the very image of God's, of God. So surely for we humans, differences in ethnic background, differences in gifts and skills, differences in personality, differences in physical appearances, differences in abilities, are all things to be embraced and valued. Variety amongst humans is something to be seen as a blessing as we reflect the life of God. On this Trinity Sunday, let us give praise to the Holy Three, the Holy One. And recalling the two implications for us that I've outlined, which flow from the very life of God, let us give thanks for the blessing of divine hospitality and, and seek to rejoice in the infinite number of differences with which humans are blessed. And in the words of Paul that we heard earlier, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. The reading of a wonderful affirmation by Australian writer, the late Bruce Pruer, and inspired by the ancient Celtic prayer on St. Patrick's breastplate. I bind unto myself this day the strong name of the Trinity, the Creator's gifts of earth and sky, the flowing creeks and the fertile land, the winter sun and summer moon, the roaring sea and golden sand. I bind unto myself this day the Christ who wears our human clay, the baby sleeping in a stall, the healer touching our disease the carpenter upon the cross, the risen friend who hears our pleas. I bind unto myself this day the spirit who is here to stay, the breath that makes the broken whole, the truth that flows like liquid light, the wind that sweeps my dusty soul, the fire that warms the darkest night. From now unto infinity, the strong name of the Trinity. Let's now offer our prayer of intercession, our prayer for others, which includes words from the English minister and writer David Adam and a pertinent and concluding prayer by the US writer Nancy C. Townley. Let's pray. Holy God, Holy Three, Holy One, to you do we lift our prayers. Compassionate Father, you have created all things and made us in your image. We rejoice in the beauty of your creation. We come before you with wonder and awe. We pray for places where your earth is exploited or marred, where your creatures are abused or misused. Enable us to be good stewards of your cosmos. Christ in glory, risen and ascended, you have redeemed us by your love and you offer us life which is eternal. We pray for all who walk in darkness, all who cry out in pain, all who feel beyond hope. We remember all who are rejected and all who are outcasts in our world. Spirit of God breathing life into all, we give you thanks for our talents and abilities, for the powers of renewal and refreshment. We pray that we and all your church may truly live out Christ's way of love, sharing the hope of the gospel in deeds and words. Holy triune God, we hold before you particular people and places whose needs weigh heavy on our hearts at this time. 
We think of the many countries struggling to respond to the onslaught of COVID-19. We think of places where the people are suffering and divided through injustice, violence, war and fear. We remember those who are struggling with anxiety, illness, deep grief or a lack of hope. Merciful and just God, our hearts are concerned with systems of injustice which strip people of their dignity and their very lives. Help us to be those who would seek peace with justice, who would fight for those who are oppressed, offer voices for the voiceless and dignity for all humankind. Be with us this day and guide our steps toward a more just world. In your name. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever, amen. Go well into this week. Take time to wonder at the incredible generosity and grace and life to be found in God. And the love of the Father enfold you, the wisdom of the Son enlighten you, the fire of the Spirit inflame you, and the blessing of the triune God rest upon you and abide with you, now and forevermore. Amen.